Let's consider some basic principles of frequency response. We have a linear circuit with a pair of terminals for the input side. I'll call that Vn of t. And a pair of terminals on the output side. I'll call that V out of t. So voltage signal goes in and the circuit produces an output voltage signal. The linear circuit can be described by a transfer function called H of s. And this embodies the frequency dependent gain as well as the uh, phase change that can get applied as the signal moves from the input to the output. Now if we apply specifically a sinusoidal signal to this linear circuit, I'll call that A cosine of omega t, A being the amplitude of the sinusoid and omega being the frequency in radians per second. We can also write omega as 2 pi times f, where f is our frequency in hertz, or cycles per second. The idea is we apply a sinusoidal input to the linear circuit. Well, if the circuit is linear, then the output is sinusoidal as well. The only thing that changes is the amplitude will vary with frequency, and the relative phase of the output sinusoid will vary as well. So when we use the term frequency response, what we really um, are getting at here is the transfer function, h of s, evaluated at s equals j times omega. So again, omega would be, uh, could also be expressed as 2 pi times f. So if we evaluate s at j 2 pi times f, we're basically stating the same thing. This gain that causes the amplitude to vary with frequency then can be written as the magnitude of the frequency response. And the phase shift can be expressed as the angle of that complex value. So h of s is complex valued, this magnitude becomes a, a real value and its phase becomes a real value. So again, we really have gain and phase shift are the two specific things embodied in h of s. Let's look at a concrete example using a simple resistor capacitor circuit. This is arranged in what's referred to as a low pass filter. Now in the s domain, we write the input and the output in terms of their Laplace transforms and the impedance of a capacitor in the S domain is one over C times S. Now the circuit we recognize as a voltage divider, we can then write V out as the impedance of the capacitor divided by the total impedance seen by the voltage source. Let's bring V in to the other side and that ratio of output to input is the definition of H of S. So we think of this as being essentially a complex valued gain, output to input. Let me do a little bit of algebraic reshuffling here. Looks like CS can divide out. I wanna get a unity coefficient on S so let's multiply top and bottom by 1 over RC. Now the frequency response of this circuit can be found by substituting J omega every place that we see S. Also omega could be also written as 2 pi times F, F being the little more commonly used frequency in, in hertz. Now I'd like to clear the 2 pi out of there just to simplify things a bit. So that means everything else gets the 2 pi and we're left just with JF. Now for low frequencies, this corresponds to the case where F is much lower than this value 1 over 2 pi RC. And in that case, the imaginary term JF is essentially dwarfed by the other piece, and we're just left with a frequency 
uh, response of one. I could write that as one at zero degrees. So we say the circuit has a gain of one and a phase shift of zero. For high frequencies where F is much higher than one over two pi RC, now the imaginary part dwarfs the real part. And in the limit, we find that this is such a large value that the denominator goes to infinity and we're left with zero at a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. And just by way of reminder, one over J, which is really what you're left with in that limit operation is minus J and that's minus 90 degrees. Now the frequency kind of in the middle of a gain of one and a gain of zero, this is what we call the corner frequency. Could also refer to this as the break frequency. And this occurs when F is equal to one over two pi RC. So we get the kind of magical value here of one over square root of two for the magnitude, which has a value of 0 0.707 and the phase angle is minus 45 degrees. So we recognize that as being essentially halfway between the zero degrees phase shift and minus 90 degree phase shift. All right, let's consider these results for a specific choice of component values for resistor and capacitor. I'm going to pick 10K for the resistor and 0 0.01 microfarads for the capacitor. If we evaluate the corner frequency expression, we have the value 1.59 kilohertz. We'll call that F sub C.